to the book of Job, the rest of the Bible, or anything else for that matter, is understanding. If we do not understand what is going on around us, what we're told, what we hear, what we read, then it's all gone out of the window. The wise man said, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Understanding is important. A man came to his pastor and said, pastor, pray for my hearing. The pastor stuck both fingers in his ears and prayed healing deliverance and blessing. I said, Lord, open his hearing. Let him hear perfectly in Jesus' name. Amen. A few minutes later, he said, son, how's your hearing? He said, I don't know. It's next Tuesday at 830. This is important <laughs> in the book of Job. And a part of understanding Job is that it is situated in what is called poetry and wisdom literature. And the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. If it were listed chronologically, it would come probably somewhere around the fourth chapter of Genesis. It's that early in biblical history. Now, we are familiar with Job in terms of his plentiful prosperity. We, 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 we walk with Job through his pilgrimage in pain. And then we see him in his pleading before God. But there's something else here that I think we need to see. Then, then we hear the, the endless, garrulous speeches of his friends and all of their advice and all of their doctrine and all of their philosophy. But, but everything changes because as, as Job begins to question God, not so much that it's wrong to question God, but Job questions God in light of his understanding of God, of who God is and of what God does. So much so until Job calls God to court and he wants to put God on the stand and interrogate him. Well, God does show up, but he's not the one on the stand. Job is on the stand. And for three chapters, Job is unable to answer God. But notice what happens when Job is unable to answer God. The Bible says, the first thing he says, I repent. I was wrong. I, 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 I looked at you the wrong way. And, and, and then after, after repentance, he said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now my eye sees you. Look at it. I uttered things I didn't understand. I dealt with things too wonderful for me. Job's confession is I did not understand. Now when Job says I see you, that's revelation. So could it be, is it possible that the book of Job is not about suffering but it's about the revelation of God? Could it be that you and I are missing God because we keep looking at the situation, but God is attempting to reveal himself and we're so caught up in the situationalism, we're missing God. I tried to share with you last week, if you only know God, listen to me now, in stuff, you don't know God. 
If you only know God in the absence of stuff, you don't know God. You don't know God until you see him apart. Listen to me now. Of the stuff, whether it's there or it's not there. In order to see the goodness of God, you've got to look at him and see him in the totality of who he is above and over and apart from the situation at the same time in the middle of it. All of us have questions, do we not? about life and its meaning and its struggles and its problems. But what we do is we pull God into the situation and we want to confine God as being God to the sense of our situation. Let me unpack that. We put God in this box of our circumstances. In other words, if you're God, why aren't you doing this? If you're God, why aren't you doing that? The only problem is you're bringing God to your understanding and you might be missing the revelation of God. Can I get you to leave here today looking at your life through a different prism, through a different lens? Maybe we just need to come to the conclusion that God is God. Maybe we need to know that the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the love of God and even the judgment of God is not confined to what I understand. So God confronted Job. And when he confronted Job, Job got revelation. Let's go a step further. Come closer. But God condemned Job's friends. And why did he condemn them? Because he said they didn't speak right concerning me. Stop for a moment. They did a lot of talking. Now please don't miss this. A lot of what they said was right. Much of what they said was right. It was true. It was accurate. But here's where it gets pro problematic. But it was not right in Job's case. See, you've got to be careful with all your knowledge and all your insight and all your theology and all your reasoning that you don't limit God to what you understand God to be. They were saying, if I know God, he acts like this. God was saying, you're right. That is a certain manner in which you're right. But in this case, you don't know what you're talking about. Too many of us are getting advice from the wrong people. Too many of us are trusting in folks we shouldn't be listening to. What we've got to learn is that nobody can tell you what's going on in your life in relationship to God because only God knows. They didn't know about the conversation between Job, between God and the devil. So they were assuming, making assumptions, platitudes, philosophies, promises, words, wisdom, talk, speech, and God said, I, 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 I want to go a little deep on you now. Maybe, is it alright? You don't mind if I go below the surface? And God said, shut up. All of you are wrong. So it's possible to speak words about God, listen to me carefully now, that are true but not necessarily true in your present situation. God might be working on something he hasn't told you about. God might be dealing with something you're not privy to. God might be working behind the scenes of your life. God might be laying something out. God might have a strategy. God might have a plan. God might be working on something. And what I want you to leave here today with, never mind what am I going through. God, show me yourself. Show me what you're doing. Tell me. Open my eyes and let me see you. Don't let me limit you to what I've been through. Yes, my heart is broken, but where are you? Yes, times are hard. Yes, my body is sick. And yes, my purse is empty, but I need to know where you are. If I find you, everything else falls into place. If I see God all of a sudden, and that you see, I want to, oh my God, I want to learn to see my life through God's eyes. I, I can look at you, and isn't it sad that's the way we judge one another? Oh, if we could just see through God's eyes. So we say, Lord, I'm suffering. Yes, you are, but look through my eyes. 
I'm going through, but look through my eyes. What does it mean to look through God's eyes? Well, if you look through God's eyes, every branch in me that bears fruit, he purges it. Every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. That means if you bear fruit, you get cut. If you don't bear fruit, you get cut. But you get cut so you can bear more fruit. God is never going to let you go through something where there's not more fruit. Everything you go through, Lord, I want to know you better. Lord, I want to get closer. Lord, reveal yourself. Lord, come out of the shadow. Let me see you. That's revelation. Church, I want to know him. My desire now, see, because sometimes when I look over my life and maybe your life, the pieces don't fit. The dots don't connect. Why did you lead me that way? In? Why that way? In? Why am I here and not there? Why this situation? Guys, if you step back and let me see God. Now, here's where it gets interesting. There was God confronted Job. He condemned his friends. But here's where it gets even more interesting. But then God had something for Job. Mm-hmm. Through all of this. Don't you love the end of the story? God said, now pray for those friends of yours. But after Job repented, prayed for his friends. Now watch this. All of a sudden, the questions of the purposes and the providence of God were no longer important to God, just the person of God. Here's where we can get in trouble. You can study theology. You can study the Bible. You can know the Bible, but you got to know the person. So, so... You don't believe me, but I'm almost finished. That's all I came to tell you. After Job lost everything. After Job's friends talked about him unfairly. After God revealed himself. After Job repented. After Job's eyes were open. The Bible says, God said, now that you see me, I'm going to give you back everything you lost. Not only everything you lost, but double. Somebody shout double. If you see God for who he is, there's a double blessing for you. If you see God for who he is, there's more than you can imagine. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll say something about that for a moment. But what about children? Why not? Why not 14 children? We had seven. Why not 14? Why not? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they died, but he never lost them. That got by you. Shame on you. See, I tell you what. Some things I can lose here. And I can't get over there. But something if I lose them here. So those seven children were dead over here. But alive over there. I came to tell you, Life Center, you're going to get double. For your trouble, when you get God's revelation, he's going to open your eyes. He's going to clear the fog away. He's going to take away the cataracts of fear. He's going to take away the miasma of doubt. He's going to take away the, the concern and let you see. And when you see him, your soul is going to exalt. When you see him, you're going to walk a new walk and talk a new talk and live a new life. And when you see him, and I'll close when I tell you this. When you see him, watch this. You have something that you cannot lose. You can lose stuff. But you can't lose him. Let me give you an example. I hope you won't mind. I've had to deal, as you have, with some people who descended into the darkness of Alzheimer's. And I remember a case where I visited someone and the, the mind had been vacated as far as doctors know. But I remember like it was yesterday, my pastor's uh, mother-in-law, much in age, and I 
Another case, I remember I was visiting a friend and I began to quote the scripture. And she locked her eyes in mine. And I could tell that was a Holy Ghost connection. <laughs> Mother Foster was my pastor's mother-in-law. And I went to see her and her words were not coherent. They, 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 they didn't make sense and I tried to speak to her and she didn't get it. But the Lord said, just sit there and watch. And the Lord said, don't try to talk to her. And, and she sat there and everything was gone. But after about five minutes, she looked up toward heaven and said, oh, bless his name. I might forget my wife and children. One day I might look at life sounds and don't know who you are. One day I might forget that I pastor the life cynically, but down in my heart, something on the inside, if I know him, nothing can rob it. And that's the only thing in life you can handle. You can lose stuff. You can lose friends, possessions, memory, but you cannot lose the revelation of God. And God could entrust Job with twice of what he had. When Job's eyes, church, my prayer for me and for you is that we would have the revelation of God. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. To love him, to trust him. To open my eyes. It's not about stuff, whether I have it or don't have it. It's not about where I am or where I want to be. I want my eyes open that I might Come to the place where you will find